Hi, Glenda. Um, my name is Courtney Finkley Green, and I'm a member of the Targeted Grants and Value Resources Committee. And um, I understand that you are um, from the organization Dreams for Kids, and you are also a recipient of the Fall 2020 Opportunity Grant. So um, again, thank you for agreeing to come do the interview. And um, we're going to ask you a couple of questions. And to the best of your ability, just try your best to describe some of the things that are going on and give us like the most detailed information possible. So are you ready? Yes, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to review our application and give us this opportunity. Um, yeah, ready to go and tell you about all the great things we've done with, with the grant. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so the first question that I would have for you would be, in so many words, tell us about your organization, its mission, founding date, location, target population, number of participants served annually, and anything else you'd like to share. Well, Dreams for Kids DC was founded in 2010. Um, I actually took over in 2011 as executive de uh, director. And over the last 10 years, we've really grown out our programs. Um, our mission is to empower youth with physical and developmental disabilities to unite with their peers and realize their potential. Um, we do this through four different programs, all where our participants um, get partnered up with a volunteer to get of camaraderie, but also to build that sense of uh, confidence and engagement um, to help them realize their dreams. Uh, we have about a thousand families, so a thousand participants that we serve. Some have only physical disabilities, some have only cognitive disabilities, and some have uh, a mix of both. The one innovative piece of our nonprofit is that we also invite siblings of our participants to be a part of the program. Um, so a brother of someone with cerebral palsy is allowed to join because we try to create a very inclusive environment um, instead of trying to exclude anyone from it to, to show them that, you know, it doesn't mean we have to segregate this demographic from, you know, from the rest of the population. We want to include them with their siblings to really grow. Um, so yeah, I hope that gives a little recap um, and I can talk more about the program. So I know you wanted a concise answer for, for this question. So. Just let me know. <laughs> Thank you so much for answering that question. Another question I have is, how has the Junior League of Washington grant impacted your program? Sure, um, well, funding this year has been a little difficult since the pandemic hit. We've had two of our largest sponsors pull out um, just because of how their revenue streams were, which we completely understand. But in the same vein, we did not we did not choose to end or not have any of our programs. We wanted to go full force, still having our programs even virtually, just so that our participants, our families didn't feel like we were neglecting them. So for your path to success, which is what uh, your grant helped us, um, with the program that you helped us with, it's we had to pivot that completely online this year. Um, so your path to success is a 10-week curriculum. We select um, a we select 10 young adults with disabilities from our participant pool. They have to apply uh, and to complete the program. Um, they, once they complete it, they get gifted a brand new laptop. Um, we also got them headsets because they need it since everything is on Zoom right now um, and uh, materials to help them com complete the 10 weeks. So um, your grant really helped us get some of those supplies, including the computers. Um, especially now, I know computers are really in demand and um, for our participants, sometimes there's just a lack of access to, um, to those equipment um, items. So um, your, your grant really helped us get those computers so that our eight participants who are part of the program, we call them mentees, could complete the 10 weeks. Um, we're actually having our 10th week this Saturday. Um, they will be uh, at closing on mock interviews. So over the last 10 weeks, they practice communication skills, digital communication skills, um, resume building, um, networking, just all those soft skills that are sometimes natural to us, but um, that they can really kind of harness and learn a little bit more through our program so that they can get a job after the program is completed. Awesome answer, thank you so much. So another question I would have for you would be, what has the Junior League of Washington grant meant to your organization, especially during these times of uncertainty? 
I know you kind of answered that a little <laughs> bit, but we should go into even more depth, especially yeah. with the multiple views and so forth. Yes, of course. So um, it, it's funny because I was really worried in the beginning about us putting this, uh, creating this program completely virtually that um, the, the engagement wouldn't be there. But I think because our participants are so needing that, that I don't know, that, that release for through, even if it's through the computer, you know, um, just to see a friend, just to see, you know, even a mentor and um, participate in the usual activities that they would be doing if the pandemic wasn't here. Um, I think that has just really shown us that the engagement is still there. So even though it's two hours every Saturday for them, they've been completely engaged, listening, participating um, every, every two hour session. Um, the mentors have to, or the mentors don't, but the mentees have to call and connect with their mentors once a week, every week, um, to just touch on homework items and um, make sure that they are held accountable. Um, I think uh, just having that, I know I keep saying engagement, but that is the most important right now. We've heard from parents that they feel so lucky to still have Dreams for Kids DC offering our virtual programs because um, without it, you know, a lot of these kids would have nothing else and they would kind of fall into, you know, maybe depression or isolation. Um, so we want to keep that window open where, you know, we provide positive reinforcement and that these kids know that we are here for them. Thank you. So now we have time for one more question and it's going to be, is there anything else you'd like to share about your organization? Sure. Um, you know, we really, pride ourselves on the um, network of our volunteers. So, uh, you know, we really welcome any junior league members to join us in any of our programs or clinics. And even if this still goes through to next year, we're still getting volunteers involved. We are starting a new program next year called the Equality Summit Leadership Program, uh, just to highlight um, even those of different abilities of different backgrounds um, and, and just how we can advocate for them um, in light of everything happening in the world right now. So, um, you know, we welcome any volunteers to just get involved. Um, it's as much a great experience for our volunteers as it is for our families and participants. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to spend it with us and, and you know, during your interview and just asking questions um, about certain things that I really appreciate it so much. And so does the Junior League. And I'm happy that we were able to provide, you know, assistance in your, your um, organization's time of need. So thank you so much. Thank and you. We really are grateful and it's helped you so much.